Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us. My name is the Reverend Jim Mose. I'm the Executive Minister of Wider Church Ministries of the United Church of Christ. The United Church of Christ has been present and active in the Middle East since 1819, when missionaries from a predecessor denomination first went to the region. Through our global ministries partnership with the Christian Church Disciples of Christ, we are blessed to have active partnerships with churches and civil society organizations throughout the Middle East, including in Palestine and Israel. The conflict between Israelis and Palestinians is one of the most enduring and consequential of our age. In 1948, over 750,000 Palestinians were forced to flee from their homes and over 400 of their villages were destroyed. The new state of Israel was founded upon 78% of historic Palestine. Palestinians were left with the remaining 22% in the West Bank and Gaza Strip. In 1967, the Israeli military occupied the West Bank and Gaza and this occupation continues to the very day now, in defiance of international law and multiple United Nations resolutions. Given the injustices and ongoing human rights violations related to the occupation, the 2015 General Synod of the United Church of Christ has adopted a resolution calling the church to engage in specific and nonviolent actions to help end the ongoing Israeli-Palestinian conflict and establish peace and justice. The Synod Resolution calls for all of the United Church of Christ entities to divest holdings from a list of companies that are known to profit from the occupation of Palestinian territories by the State of Israel. The resolution also calls for a boycott of goods that are identified as produced in illegal settlements located on occupied Palestinian territories. Boycott and divestment are nonviolent strategies of resistance which have been called for by the Palestinian Christian community and Palestinian civil society. Among the other provisions of the resolution is a call for the officers of the United Church of Christ to persist in requesting Congress to ensure that Israel complies with the U.S. Foreign Assistance Act and the U.S. Arms Ex Export Control Act. These acts prohibit assistance to any country that consistently violates human rights, and it limits the use of U.S. weapons to internal security and legitimate self-defense. The United Church of Christ condemns all forms of violence and anti-Semitism and it affirms Israel's right to exist within secure and internationally recognized borders. We similarly assert the right of Palestinians to have a sovereign and independent state that is viable and also within secure and recognized borders. The United Church of Christ is deeply committed to interfaith relations with both Jewish and Muslim brothers and sisters, as well as those of other faith traditions. Following the long history of engagement, we call for continuation of interfaith dialogue. And I will also note that the resolution that the United Church of Christ General Ascended has just adopted was endorsed by Archbishop Emeritus Desmond Tutu of South Africa. I would like to introduce you now to my colleague, the Reverend, excuse me, my colleague Peter Makari, the Middle East Executive uh, Middle East and Europe Executive of Global Ministries. Thank you, Jim. My name is Peter McCary. I serve as Executive for the Middle East and Europe in Wider Church Ministries. With me at this table uh, is the Reverend Dr. Bernard Wilson, the Chair of the United Church of Christ Board from Connecticut, and Mrs. Angelica Harder, from Massachusetts, the convener and chair of the United Church of Christ Palestine Israel Network. I'd just like to share what this resolution is and what it is not. With this resolution, the United Church of Christ 
will sustain and strengthen its voice opposing the perpetuation of Israeli occupation of Palestinian lands. With this resolution, the United Church of Christ affirms the authentic voice of partners, in particular, lifting up the Palestine Kairos document. The United Church of Christ, as a just peace church, advocates with the US government to ensure Israeli compliance with the United States' own laws, particularly those laws that Jim mentioned a moment ago. This resolution is divestment from specific corporations that are profiting from occupation. It is not a resolution of divestment from Israel. This resolution is an effort to use nonviolent strategies available to us, called for by partners to address the occupation. It is not a blanket endorsement of the Palestinian Civil Society BDS movement. This resolution is an extension of almost 50 years of engagement on this issue by General Synod. In the context of Synod actions, especially with, re with respect to a larger corpus of engagement on the Middle East, beyond Israel-Palestine, and many, many resolutions on the United Church of Christ's engagement in global issues of peace and justice. This resolution focuses on Israeli policies and occupation and seeks to engage our Jewish colleagues in a substantive conversation and dialogue around these issues and encourages our congregations and members to continue in those dialogues. Thank you. We'd be happy to entertain any questions there might be. Yes. Uh, Jim and Peter, can you guys you refer a little bit about what this resolution uh, calls for? Can you guys just explain a little bit about what it means to each of you in your uh, work, uh, somewhat personally? Peter, go first. Thank you, Anthony. As you know, the United Church of Christ, uh, through Global Ministries, has engaged with partners in the region for many, many years. We have relationships that uh, are 200 years old. And beyond that, of course, our Christian history goes back 2,000 years. The UCC has a particular emphasis on peace and justice issues. And all of the areas of engagement that this resolution calls for uh, are consistent with what the United Church of Christ has been doing. So this will bolster and support the work that we are doing. In 2005, 10 years ago, at General Synod, the UCC adopted a resolution on economic leverage. And that offered the church in its many settings to engage this issue and identified certain areas where the UCC could engage, including supporting partners and organizations that are engaged in nonviolent resolution of this conflict. Second, in 2009, the Palestinian Christian community launched and uh, shared with the world the Kairos document. In early 2010, the United Church of Christ leadership with the Christian Church Disciples of Christ leadership commended that document for study. This resolution reiterates that commendation and encourages our congregations to learn what that document says and what the authentic voice of Palestinian Christians is saying. Third, in October of 2012, the United Church of Christ leadership, including Joffrey Black and Jim Mose, signed a letter with 15 total uh, ecumenical leaders uh, to engage with Congress and call for Congress to engage in hearings uh, to ensure that Israel is complying with various U.S. laws regarding the immense amount of military aid uh, that the United, the United States sends to Israel on an annual basis. Aid that, it, that appears to be unconditional, whereas aid to other countries uh, you routinely goes through processes of review. So this encourages our members and our churches to continue to engage that issue and for us to continue to engage with Congress. And of course, the interfaith aspect is important. We have 
been involved in uh, interfaith relations with the Jewish community and have affirmed that relationship uh, in 1987 at a general synod. And we are also engaged with, uh, with the Muslim community in dialogue. In 1989, we affirmed our relationship with the Muslim community. So these resolutions and our own theological understanding of community uh, ensure that we will continue to be engaged with, uh, with colleagues of other faiths, and particularly the Muslim and Jewish communities. So this resolution is consistent, but it adds more to it. So this will, uh, will support the work that we're doing, will be an educational piece for our congregations and also a way to urge our congregations uh, to act. Yes. The Palestinian Kairos document, which was launched in December of 2009, calls for the world to engage this issue. And among those various calls is to consider ways to engage in economic leverage, including boycott, divestment, and sanctions. This resolution does endorse boycott, divestment, and sanctions. Uh, the, the difference between, uh, and what I was saying earlier, the difference is that the civil society movement of the Palestinian community in 2005, uh, the demands of the BDS movement that were established in that year, uh, make three uh, demands. The first, an end to the occupation. The second, uh, e the uh, legitimate rights of the refugee community, the Palestinian refugee community, that they be adhered to. And third, that, uh, that Israeli Palestinians enjoy equal rights as citizens within Israel. This resolution particularly relates to the occupation. So that is the difference that I was referring to earlier. Are there any other questions? Anthony? Uh, Angelica, could you maybe speak just very briefly a little, a little bit to uh, Pins involvement and also with that, uh, what this means now that that grassroots group has really uh, brought this to General Senate and had it affirmed? All right. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. My name is Angelica Harker. I'm the chair of the UCC Palestine Israel Network. and. My motivation for involved, getting involved in this um, passionate justice work was a trip to Israel and Palestine in 2006, where I met both Israeli and Palestinian peacemakers and our global ministry um, partner who was working there and who told us much of the history of the conflict and the story of today. Um, when I came home, I looked at the UCC resolutions that we had passed in the past and started talking with other people and educating within my own church and realized with colleagues that we had no, um, we had passed all these wonderful resolutions and we affirmed many things and Global Ministries was doing very good work, but there was no grassroots movement within the church that was trying to implement those resolutions or carry them forward. So gradually we began gathering a group of people together which met formally first in January of 2012 and called ourselves the Palestine-Israel Network. And um, we thought deeply about how we could carry this work forward and spread the um, involvement to local churches and to conferences. So we, we um, gradually worked on this resolution and started first by bringing it forth to local churches and bringing it forth to conferences in their annual meetings. And in the last year and a half, uh, nine different conferences considered it and passed it. And in that process, I want to affirm and express great gratitude for the UCC's processes of covenantal work together. Um, this, this resolution started out as a model from our network, but 
uh, gradually it was adopted and taken on by conferences and they improved it and they, they added to it, they um, added other clauses and especially the long clause on interfaith work was developed in a conference. I think that in many ways that improved the resolution. We made it very comprehensive on purpose and also we've been in conversation with the United Church funds and the pension boards as to how it will be implemented and we'll be continuing to do that. And prior to its adoption at this General Synod, the resolution in, in various forms had been adopted by I believe 11 of our United Church of Christ conferences. Chair of the United Church of Christ Board, I would say one should never underestimate the power of words. And although we've had several resolutions to this point, this resolution puts our faith into action and allows us to move in positive ways to support our partners around the world. And I am godly proud of the decision by our General Senate to act on this resolution today. Are there any other questions for us? And thank you very much, and let us continue to pray for the peace and justice of Jerusalem and of all peoples. Thank you.